Everyone knows that if you're going to sell your house, spring is the optimum time to do it. Bristol resident Lisa Gillette with Keller Williams has been a real estate agent for over 16 years and a top seller in Connecticut, and she gives some tips on how to select an agent. Lisa, I am sure that you work with a lot of first-time home buyers, and I know they have to ask you, why should I buy instead of continuing to rent? For some people, renting works. They're not quite sure they're going to stay in the area. Their job might be up in the air. I get that. But most of the time when I, when, when I get that question, I also want to let them know that it's, you're paying somebody else's mortgage off. Let's pay your own. That's a little investment for you. That's a little savings account every time you pay that mortgage. To get into a, a property these days, you could, you could need up to about $5,000 just to get into a rent. I just wrote a rental contract the other day, $5,400 up front. That's, that could be a down payment on a first time home buyer. And there are some tax benefits as well. Tax benefits, you, you know, you get to write that interest off. You have an investment now, and, and, and um, it, it pays off. It, it definitely pays off. Okay, so you've made the decision that you're now going to sell your house. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are some of the questions that uh, they should ask a realtor? Because there's a ton of them out there. There's a ton of them out there. Um, you want to ask a realtor what value they're going to give to you, them as the homeowners. Um, what are we going to do for you to get your house sold? in a reasonable amount of time, for the best value that we can. Um, I work with sellers all the time. I have my system in, my systems in place where I'm going to do a very detailed market analysis. I'm going to share with them homes that have closed recently within a certain radius of their home. Sometimes we have to go out further. Sometimes we have to go back farther as far as when homes have closed. We want to kind of compare it to their square footage, their bedrooms, their conditions. Um, they don't always love those numbers when we give them that. Everybody wants to get a whole mess of money for their properties, but in reality, we have to be realistic with the market price. So they're going to ask that realtor how they come up with that. What are their marketing strategies? How long do I think the house is going to be on the market for? That's a tough one. I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't always be on the money, but as far as when it can sell, but it's all about how we present that home to the buyers that are out there. Take us through the process from start to finish about you know what somebody who's selling their house can expect. Sure. Um, when I have someone that has said, yes, we've chosen you, we want you to sell our house, great, awesome, I know I'm going to do a great job for them, but I have a list of what we're going to do first to get that home on the market and to get it ready to sell. Um, I often recommend, I don't require it, but I do recommend in my business a pre-listing home inspection. Um, just for your own knowledge, we don't have any surprises later on down the road. You completely, it pays for itself because there could be some fixes that your relative might be an electrician and they can fix an outlet if we have something that might be, you know, in the way there. Um, it's a great tool. It, it, it again, will get that process going in a much smoother manner. We do an awesome marketing um, value for, your, for the clients when they do decide, yes, this is, we want to pick you and let's get it going. We will have a stager go out to stage the property. We have about 30 seconds to capture that buyer when they walk through the door. If we lose them before that, or, you know, after that, then we might literally lose them and we don't want that to happen. So we want the appearance of the home to be neat and tidy. We're moving anyways. I always tell my clients, get rid of some stuff. Everybody has tons of stuff. And yet at the same time, I let them know they still have to live in the house and be comfortable. We always hear about curb appeal. Mm -hmm. What goes into curb appeal? I, my thoughts for curb appeal is some color. I know it's hard right now with the dreary winter months, so maybe we throw a fancy wreath with a little bit of color on the front door, or we paint the front door a different color. Might not be, you know, something that that home, you know, that seller would actually think, I really, do I really want to paint my, house, my door, you know, a vibrant color, but it gives us some color in the winter months. Um, keep everything picked up outside. 
I can't stand when garbage cans are out front. Let's move them to the back. It's yeah. important. Yeah. So let's shift gears a little bit. Now you've sold your house and now you want to buy. So that agent's pretty critical then. When you're walking through a, a tour of a house that you're thinking about buying, mm -hmm. what should you be looking for and what should homeowners be uh, asking questions about? They need to ask the important questions, um, the biggies, because a home is expensive. It's a huge investment. We want to know about some of the structure of the properties. We want to know roofs, windows, furnaces, how our fireplaces are. Those are some of the biggies that I, 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 that I look for with my, with my buyers. Um, I've been in construction throughout all of my real estate career, so it helps me do that too. Um, but I like to have my buyers see those things. I also point out some things with my buyers that I think are so important. When we're walking through a property, which kind of brings you back to the staging uh, discussion, we're husband and wife or couple or a bunch of friends buying a property together. If they have to go through home, you know, room single file, that's going to turn them off. They're not going to want to. So that, that goes back to our staging thing. But I point that out to my buyer. If we can't fit through this or that, it might be a little tight for you guys. I, I don't want them to, to buy this house and have to sell it in a year. I want them to live in it and enjoy it and, and, and go through that process. This is a big investment. Now, you've mentioned staging a couple of times. What is the advantage of having a stager? Um, having a stager, it, it's just, it, it helps that buyer to envision themselves in that property and where our furniture is placed and a little bit of the decor without possibly having 10 photos of the family, which I get that. We all love to have pictures of our family up, up in a house. What happens with things like that is that buyer walks in the house and they're looking on the wall and they're going, did I go to school with them? And then they forget if there was hardwood floors. They forget if there was a new, you know, a new replacement window in the front. So part of the staging process, that's one of the benefits when you're walking into a home is we tend to declutter. Declutter so they're not looking at your stuff, they're looking at your home and they know what it's going to be like to put their couch on this wall, you know, and instead of a massive entertainment system that might be a little overpowering. Um, staging is actually a marketing tool. Um, it's used in real estate and what it does is it allows um, a potential buyer to see how the house um, can be used. 10% um, of the American public um, can walk into a house and see their furniture in a house, can see how a room is set up. So myself as a stager um, does that for them basically. Very often when um, somebody buys a house they will set a room up exactly the way it was staged. Um, and that's basically because they don't know what to do with it. Um, what it entails is, um, first and foremost, um, I meet with a client, whether it be through a realtor or um, my own private clients. I have a website, they call me. Um, and um, I will do a walkthrough. It starts at the front door. Um, I heard you talk to Lisa about curb appeal. That's also part of my job. Um, in the summertime, we make sure that there's flowers at the front door. We make sure there's color at the front door, as Lisa said. Um, and then, then it goes through the house. However, I'm using my eyes um, as a buyer would. So I'm totally, totally going to be brutally honest with, with a homeowner. Um, that, I bet you know. that gets a little touchy, doesn't it? Um, well, after 10 years of doing it, you learn to do it with a smile. <laughs> Okay. Right. Um, I had one client who the first thing you saw when you walked through the door was a bubblegum pink dining room. Okay. Um, needless to say, I had to say to her, um, my suggestion would be that this room be painted. Okay. Um, and after we went round robin with it and I explained to her that this is the first thing that somebody sees when they walk through the door. Um, you see it as, I love this room. I painstakingly picked out the, the paint. Um, I love this room. They look at it and say, I have to paint this room. This is work I have to do. And in, in today's society, people don't like to do work. They like to move their furniture in and start living in their house, basically because they're all really way too busy. Okay. And it's a um, long process. And it's a anyway. long process. And for a lot of people, they want that process to be immediate. Okay, they don't want to do one room at a time um, because they really honestly just don't have the time to do one room, um, room at a time. So the more that we can do to alleviate that, um, the better off we are. Um, when, when somebody um, walks into a house and it's just the way it should be, 
Um, those, those people put the, their, these properties really high on the list. Um, they've already looked at it in the, at the, um, in the internet. Um, they have done, 98% of the people do their search on the internet. So they've actually fallen in love with this property before they ever walk through the door. It's my job as a stager to make sure that that continues. You mentioned a really important thing. You bring in the stager, but now somebody could want to see that house at any time and open houses. Mm -hmm. How do you live while you're trying to sell that house? It's tough. You, you live very neatly. <laughs> you put those toothbrushes under the cabinet. You don't leave them on the counter anymore. Um, it, it's not easy. And again, I, and that's one of the things I always mention when we are listing it. I, I give them their laundry list as well as the stager does the same thing, but I still stress, and I think it's important, you still have to live in your home and be comfortable in it but you do have to tidy it up. And, and as an agent, I have literally gone and made beds for people that have forgotten to make their beds when they're have a showing. So make your beds, keep everything neat and clean, counters clean, no dishes in the sink, um, pick up your towels. <laughs> and the mainstay really still is an open house, isn't it? The, uh, open houses are great. I, I think they're great. Um, you know, it, it gives people a chance to, it's a great advertisement. Sure. It's all over the place. It's social media blasted when we do open houses. I, d I do cookout open houses. In the summertime, you're going to get a hot dog out back. I'm, cooking you. I'm cooking you some lunch. I've done it many times. Keeps people around. Now they're feeling like they live here. They're getting that feel. They're sticking around. You feed them and they stay a little bit longer. Okay? <laughs> and ask more questions. <laughs> That's right. So uh, open houses are very important. How you do mm -hmm. your open house is very, very important. And, and I do love doing what I, what I do with my open houses. Y you have conversations. The next day they all go to work. We've already social media blasted it, but now they're going to work the next day. Hey, what'd you do this weekend? They're also now advertising my open house for me a day later. Now here we are in March. It really kind of starts, I guess, uh, you know, in the next month or two. So this is really the time to, to start getting your house ready and making that decision. It's almost beyond. Yeah, it's, we're, we're into the, to me, we're in the spring market. Um, typically as a realtor, I've always thought that the spring market starts the Monday after Super Bowl Sunday. If you think of how long your house, you know, a couple months on the market, a couple months to close, we're already mid-March. Mm. You know, we're right. getting up to mid-March at that point when you take that time frame. So this is the time. Um, when the grass turns green, those buyers are out there and they're everywhere. Um, right now is a great time. Right now is a great time to list. Our inventory is low. Get it on the market now. There's not a lot to pick from. So that was my next question. The market yeah. is pretty good. I know it's a little volatile on interest rates, yeah. but, but you kind of got to say this is a long-term investment and, and pull the trigger. It absolutely is. It's, it, the interest rates might be sneaking up a smidge. I bought my first house at 13% many years ago. Right. Guess what, guys? 4 or 5% isn't, isn't going to hurt. It's going to be okay. Right. Um, prices of houses are still great, too. Uh, do it now. Do it while we have... As, as of right now, we have a low inventory. You put your house on the market now, it's not allowed to pick from. We're going to get it sold. You put it on when we're real, real busy, it might take a smidge because there's a lot more to look for and look at. There's no doubt, maybe one of the most major decisions you make in your life is selling your house, but it also means a great new beginning. But that's the end for us this month. Thank you so much for joining us. Have you got a story idea or maybe a comment? Our email address is marketing at bristolct.gov. Want to know more about Bristol? The website is www.bristolallheart.com. And of course, we're on social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. So good luck with selling your house. Good luck with your brackets, and we'll see you next month.